All righty, friends. Well, welcome back to our phonics part of our day. And of course, we're going to work on make believe words. We're going to work on our sight words. We have two new ones, by the way. And just want to let you know that you all did amazing on Friday, friends. Wow. Mrs. Strickland and I were so proud proud of how well you did. So keep that good work going. And we're also going to work on our letters and sounds. We're going to work on listening to two sounds and putting them together. We have a new letter for the week. So we're going to work on the letter T. We're going to learn Tiggy Tiger's new song. We're also going to work on comparing words that begin with the t sound, words that begin with the s sound, and words that begin with the a ah sound. So we'll compare pictures and words that go with those letters, okay? And then today, friends, we're going to read a really cute book about realistic fiction. And realistic fiction is when a story, it's a story that is not real, but it really could happen in real life, okay? So that's realistic fiction, so we'll, we'll read that story. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's do our nonsense words. All right, so here we go, friends. Mm, I, mm, vim. Oh, oh, it is upside down. B, ock, bock. G, I, mm, gim. S, ub, sub. E or fur. App fap. V if this. P eb peb. B of bob. T as taz. Very good. Great job, friends. All right. Now, how many vowels are there? Mm -hmm. Five vowels. And how many sounds does each vowel have? Mm -hmm. Two. And what are they? A, A, E, E, I, I O, A, U, U. All right. Fist in the air. We're going to start off really, really quietly. We'll get a bit louder, louder, louder. Ah, faster. All right, you ready? Okay, here we go. A E I O U. A little bit louder. A E I O U. A little bit louder. A E I O U. Now we're going to get louder. A E I O U. Now we're going to get louder and faster. So here we go. A I O U A I O U A I O U M. So please keep practicing your vowels. Very very important, friends, that you know your vowels. Okay, remember, vowels have two sounds. Of course, you know that, right? They say their what? Mm -hmm. They say their name and they say their sound. That's why they are so special. All right, let's go ahead and do our letters and sounds. But this time, let's go ahead and do our letter and our sound together. So here we go. J, 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 A, A, G, G, D, D, E, E, F, S, S, T, L O M 
M, F, R, R, H, W, W, P, P, Q, Q, U, A, V, I, I, K, K, O, O, X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z, B, B, C, K, N, N. Very good. That was really, really good, friends. We like flew right through that one. That was awesome. Now for our sight words. Here we go. So I'm going to introduce to you a word. Okay. So this is M and Y. Okay. So when you see M and Y together, the Y makes the sound of I. Okay, and there is a poem that goes with that so that you can remember. And it goes like this. It's titled, The Bandit Y. My name is The Bandit Y. I can sound like an E or sound like an I. I try to be sneaky. <gasps> Ooh, see that? I try to be sneaky. The Y sounds like a what? E. And I think that's easy. -e. What does that sound like? Easy is the E. I mean, I, sorry. I steal sounds so they cannot be found. My buddy, so here's the word buddy, okay, and it makes it sound like an E. My buddy says I'm sly. Ooh. Here's that word, sly, so it sounds like I. And my mommy, ooh, mom e. there's a Y, but it sounds like what? Mom E, sounds like E, there's the E. Mommy calls me a wise guy. <gasps> there's the word guy, it ends with a Y, but it sounds like an I. So now that we know about the band and why he can sound like an E or he can sound like an I. So if we tried using the side up, the E, let's try the E part. M, E, M, E, me. That is not the sight word me, friends. Let's try with the Y. Let's try using it as an I. M, mm, I, M, mm, I, the word is my. So this band in Y, his sound is I. Okay, so that's a really, really good way to remember that. All right, look at this one. Let's sound it out. W, I, when you have these two letters together, T and H, they make the th sound. So go ahead and practice that with me. Watch my lips. Okay, do it again. Okay, one more time. Yeah, so T and H make the th sound. All right, so let's go ahead and try sounding it out. Wa, I, wa, I, with, with, with. Yeah, and you see how my, my tongue is right here in the middle look with see that yeah and of course you know this yeah. I got this one come mm -hmm. like two I Ooh, that's a vowel the C a that's another vowel me, oh, let me put that one right next to my. So this is another way we can remember me and my. So if we were to see M and E, 
me, this tells us this is me. So if we try to say mm, e, mm, e, me, we'll know that that is not the same word, right? So remember, this one sound, it makes the sound I or my. Okay. And then finally, we. Yeah. And then that's it with. All right, friends, so make sure that you practice all of your sight words because these two new ones are added to our list and it just keeps growing and growing and we keep testing and testing on them, okay? So don't slack off on practicing your sight words. All right, so let's see. Today we're going to do something that is called phoneme seg and we know that phoneme segs is when we take we listen to a word and we try to hear how many sounds are in that word okay so for example listen to this one and a n d and okay what about glue g o u g o u three okay how about cat k at k at so this one has three phonemes that means it has three sounds now let's try this one this one has two phonemes that means two sounds zoo z u z u zoo okay what about out out out, out, two. Okay, how about at, 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 at. Ooh, tea. Ooh, I like to drink tea. T, e, t, e, t. Oh, friends, look at this one. This one has four phonemes. That means four sounds. Crab. K, er, a, b. Er, ab, crab, crab, crab. Okay, what about flag? F, o, a, g, f, o, a, g, flag, flag, flag. Okay, what about drip? D, er, ip, d, er, ip, drip, drip, drip. Good job. All right, friends. So this week, we are going to be learning about um, different types of animals this week. We're also going to be uh, talking about how people interact with animals. So to start it off, I know lots of you know this song. So you can go ahead and sing along with me. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on his farm he had some cows, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo, Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some dogs, E-I-E-I-O, with a woof woof here and a woof woof there, here a woof, there a woof, everywhere a woof woof, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some ducks, E-I-E-I-O, with a quack quack here and a quack quack there, here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Oh. Now friends, you of course can continue singing it, but I'm going to stop right there. Otherwise, we could be here all day with me doing all of the animal sounds. Okay? All right. So here we go. Yes. 
So here we have a farm. Let me move this over so you can see all of the awesome animals. So friends, I am going to say some sounds, okay? When I say the sounds, then you will blend them together to make the word. All right, so listen to our very first sound. D-O-G, D-O-G. Word is dog. Very, very good. All right, let's do our next one. K-A-T, K-A-T, cat. Excellent, look at the cat. Ooh. And you know what? Gwen was saying the other day that she wants to see my cat. Well, you know, my cat is sort of kind of this color. Yeah. Yeah. She's yellow, but for cats, they say that they're orange, but they're really not orange. They look more yellow. Okay. All right. Let's do our next one. Mmm. Ouse. Mmm. Ouse. Mouse. <gasps> Yikes, and there's the mouse right there. You know, Mrs. Harrow does not like mice. Yuck. All right, so here we go to our next one. K Ow. K Ow. Cow. Very good. And this is a big black and white cow. Yeah, see that? All right, our next one. D uck. D uck. Duck. Good job. Oh, this is a cute little duck, friends. All right, and finally, p ig, p ig, pig. Excellent, excellent. Great job, my friends. All right, so let's see. So I'm going to continue doing some uh, onset and rhymes. That means where. I will say the first sound and then the second sound and we put them back together. That's just what we did right here. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, here we go. K and K and can. Very good. All right. How about er un er un run. Excellent. How about R, R, far, good job. D, ought, D, ought, da. Mm -hmm. S, ick, S, ick, sick. M, mm, N, M, mm, N, men, very good. All right, now let's do our daily vocabulary boost. Do you think it would be a delight to hear a rooster early, early in the morning? Now remember, delight means that it's something that you just love to hear. Okay, so listen again. Do you think it would be a delight to hear a rooster early in the morning? Well, some of you might say, oh, yeah, I think it would be wonderful. And some of you might say, oh, no, it is way too early to be woken up from a rooster. But you know what? Did you know that farmers don't even use alarm clocks? Well, they don't have to because the rooster uh, does his, what's the sound? What's the sound that a rooster does? So a rooster crows at daybreak. That means right when the sun is just barely going to rise. It's on the horizon. So it doesn't crow right when it's way up at the top. No, it's when it's just barely starting to rise. Which farm animal do you think is most interesting? Okay, yeah, I would say, yeah, dogs are cool. Okay, 
cows, mm -hmm. pigs, sheep, mm -hmm. cats, mm -hmm. cats can, can live on the farm, chickens, mm -hmm. what else? Yeah, horses, anything else? Let me see what I have here, I'll show you. Well, we said cows, pigs, chickens, Let's see. Ah, horses, mm -hmm. mm, sheep. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a blue sheep? Neither have I, but I have a blue sheep here. Let's see what other animals we have here. I have a whole lot of animals, friends. But let's see. Hmm. Oh, okay, so how about this one? Does this one look pretty? Yeah, that looks normal, right? A white sheep and a black sheep. Did I show you a chicken? Here's our chicken. And I showed you a horse, right? And I showed you a cow and pigs. I think that's it. Yeah, and friends. Could there, could there be tortoises in a farm? Could there be a tortoise? Well, I guess there could be, yeah. What about a snake? Could a snake be on a farm? Well, it could, but it, generally you don't hear about snakes on the farm. If you do, it's kind of like really, really rare that there are snakes there because the farmer doesn't go out and give a snake water and give it, feed it, right? So, nah, I don't think so, okay? All right, let's see what else we're doing. Oh, okay, so friends, this is Tiggy Tiger, and Tiggy begins with T, and the sound for T is T, T, T. Say that with me, T, T, T. And let's look at some T words. Here we have Whoa. T, T, Tiger, T, T, Tiger. Telephone, t -t -t telephone, t -t -t toaster, t -t -t toaster, and oh, that is making me super hungry. It's almost lunchtime for Mrs. Carl. All right, so are you guys ready to hear Tiggy Tiger's song? I think you guys might like it. I I like it. I think it's a pretty cool song. But then again, you know, Mrs. Harrow loves all kinds of songs, right? But music is good, friends. Yeah, so let me find it on my phone. Okay, so I have to scroll all the way to the letter T. That's almost at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. I think you'll like this song, friends. Tiggy Tiger can tickle his toes. Tickle your toes. Tiggy Tiger can tap his nose. Tiggy Tiger can turn around. Tiggy Tiger can touch the ground. Touch the ground. Tiggy Tiger can tie his shoes. Tie your shoes. Tiggy Tiger can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, here comes our turn. Here we go. Tiggy Tiger can tickle his toes. Tiggy Tiger can tap his nose. Tiggy Tiger can turn around. Tiggy Tiger.
tiger can't touch the ground. Tiggy tiger can tie his shoes. Tie his shoes. Tiggy tiger can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, the guy's coming back. Let's sing with him. Tiggy tiger can tickle his toes. Tickle your toes. Tiggy tiger can tap his nose. Tiggy tiger can turn around. Tiggy tiger can touch the ground. Touch the ground. Tiggy tiger can tie his shoes. Tie your shoes. Tiggy tiger can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So what did you think? Did you like Tiggy Tiger's song? I told you you would. Some of these Alpha Friends songs are just so fun and just make you so happy, right? All right, guys. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to compare letters. T. Oh, let me move this over so you can see my, my big chart here. T. So we're going to work on T. We're going to compare words that and pictures that begin with S. And finally, words and pictures that begin with A. So I'm going to show you a picture card. We will first say the sound and then its name. All right, so here we go. T -t toast. T -t toast. Where, which column would t -t toast go in the T column, in the S column, or in the A column. What do you think? How about if we do this, friends? Let's do it this way, that way. Maybe all of them can fit. All right, so let's see. Where do you think we're going to put t -t toast? <laughs> yeah, in the T column. T -t toast. All right, let's look at this one. Remember, we're going to say the sound first and then the word. S -s sandals. S -s sandals. What column would s -s sandals go in the t, t column, in the s, s column, or in the a, a column? In the s column. Good job. All right. Sound first. A, A, Ant. A, A, Ant. What column? The A. Good job. All right. S sad. S sad. Oh, he's so sad. What column will he go in? In the T column, the S column, or the A column? In the S column. If we put him in the T column, he would be, oh, look, he is so Tad. What is Tad? No, that isn't even a word for him. All right, here we go with our next one. Remember, sound first. T, t, toys. T, t, toys. What column? The T column. T, Toys, good job. All right, here we go with this one. T -t ten. T -t ten. Mm -hmm. The T column. Oh, you guys are just like super duper smart, my friends. All right. Ah, ah, astronaut. Ah, ah, astronaut. What column? Mm -hmm. The A column. All right. S -s -s 
sandwich. S -s sandwich. And, oh, oh, friends, look how delicious that sandwich looks. And I wish it was me who took a bite of that sandwich. Remember, I told you it's almost Mrs. Hall's lunch All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tooth. Tooth. And many of you have said that you have lost some teeth. Eleni, you lost a tooth. Alexenia, I think you said you lost two teeth. Yeah. So where is the t -t tooth going to go on? What column? The T column, S or A? The T column. Good job, friends. That was fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and read our story. Remember, I said that we are doing a realistic fiction. Okay, that means this is a story, but it really could happen in real life. This is Amelia's Show and Tell Fiesta, and it's this is a bilingual book, friends. That means that it is written in English and then in Spanish. So I'll read this part right here. It says, Amelia y la fiesta de muestra y cuenta. And it is written by Mimi Chopra and illustrated by Martha Avalis. And what do you think her name is? Listen again. Amelia show and tell fiesta. Yeah, Amelia. So we know that the story is going to be about someone named Amelia. And is it a boy or a girl? A girl. And this here is my mm -hmm, title page. Amelia show and tell fiesta. Now, friends, because of time constraints, I'm not going to read it in Spanish. I'm just going to read it in English, okay? So I'll read it and then I'll show you the pictures. Up the steps, two at a time, Amelia runs into her new school, Americana. That means an American school. She takes a seat in the front row of the class. Then Amelia leans forward, following her teacher's every word. So there goes Amelia running up the stairs, two at a time, and then there's her classroom. Now, you see how we talked about that it's realistic fiction? So, could you go to school? Yeah, so that means that realistic fiction means that even though it's a story, it could happen in real life. For tomorrow's show and tell, says Mrs. Jenner, bring something special you'd like to share with your friends. Then everyone will have a chance to talk about their treasures. Ay, Amelia claps her hands together. I think I understand. Now Amelia's plans, muy grandes, that means really big, pull her in like the tide. For my first show and tell, I'll find something estupendo from my island home. So estupendo means like super special. And look. Oh, look at Amelia. She looks like so super duper excited. And look at him. Why do you think he has his, his finger like that? What do you think that means when you do that? Yeah, he's thinking like, hmm, I wonder what I can bring. Have you ever had show and tell? Well, I hope you say yes, because sometimes when we have a few minutes left in our live sessions, I say, do you have something to share? And right away, you guys run and go bring something in and show it to us, right? So that's a form of show and tell. It's not a a formal show and tell, which means today, well, we're going to do a, a show and tell. No, but it's a quick one. So if you never have, you can say, yeah, I have. Now you can. 
off. Closing her eyes, Amelia pictures her fiesta dress, the one she wore to carnival per oh, carnaval parade. Perfecto, she decides. That means perfect. And her smile stretches wider than the sea at Miramar. And there she is, daydreaming and thinking about. These are some dancers from her country. Yeah. See that? Con los ojos cerrados. That means, oh, with her eyes closed. But I wasn't going to read that part, remember? All right. Next morning, Amelia rises before the rooster. Looking out the bedroom window, she combs her curly hair over and over. Then carefully, she steps into her special dress. My fiesta dress has one, two, three fancy skirts, Amelia says proudly. She tries a teeny twirl and her ruffled skirts flutter. So here, at first, she's over here brushing and brushing and brushing her beautiful hair. And then she says that her dress has three ruffles. One, two, three. What else did it say? Her, it, oh, she calls it a fancy skirt. Let's continue. First, Red Rojo whips around her hips like fiery hot peppers. So now she's talking about each ruffle. Remember, there's three ruffles. So the first one, she refers to it like a red hot chili pepper. Yeah. Ooh, have you ever eaten red hot chili peppers? Not me. Mrs. Harrow doesn't like chili. I don't like burning my mouth. No. Yellow. Amarillo swirls around her knees like a sea of ripe corn. So here's the second ruffle. And it is yellow. Amarillo is yellow. And she refers to it like a sea of ripe corn. So when she says like a sea of Right, corn. That means like there's lots and lots of corn all around her. Just like you know how the sea has lots and lots of water. White Blanco circles her feet like a flock of gulls in flight. So the last ruffle is white. And she refers to it like a flock of gulls in flight. So here are some seagulls, and they're white, so they're referring to that part of her skirt, or her ruffle, I should say, like the seagulls. When Mama sees Amelia looking so fine, she cries, Magnifico! That means magnificent. And pins a gardenia in her daughter's hair, then arm in arm, they walk to the new school. There's some scholars walking. And there's her and her mommy. And a gardenia is a, is a flower. And it smells, oh, so sweet, friends. It has such a sweet, sweet aroma. Into the class, Amelia goes. But one glance around the room and suddenly she feels foolish, like a crazy chicken. A pollo loco. Que pasa? She wonders. I'm the only one in costume. Let's see. She feels kind of foolish. Means she feels kind of like, oh no, why did I do that? No one else is wearing anything so special. Well, why do you think that happened? Yeah, she comes from a different country, so she obviously doesn't know what 
show and tell is in America. But let's see if maybe it can change for her. Let's see. Over in the next seat, Harita asks, what did you bring? Bring? Amelia frowns. My fiesta dress. No, I mean, what did you bring for the show and tell basket? I don't understand, Amelia says. So see, she's not understanding that you're supposed to bring something for show and tell. She thought you're supposed to wear something. Poor Amelia. Harvita points to the teacher's table. Amelia sees a basket brimming with unusual things. Cradled in straw sits Parvita's clay elephant from India, Moyo's handmade truck, and Akio's carp-shaped kite. So here's the, the two girls, and here's all the different things that the scholars have brought or show and tell. Now her fiesta dress doesn't seem special. Not anymore. It can't be put in a basket and passed around and touched like the other terrific toys. Caramba! That means like, oh no, like, oh dear. Amelia sighs. <gasps> I want to go home. Suddenly, she hears Mrs. Jenner call her name. I mistake muy grande. So she means, she thinks she made a mistake, a really big mistake. I brought nothing for show and tell. And so there they are. See how he's presenting his show and tell. And all the scholars look really actively engaged with it, and even the teacher. But look at Amelia. She looks really what? She looks really sad. Can you show me a sad face? Poor Amelia. Standing in front of everyone empty-handed, she freezes. Ooh. Amelia! The teacher says softly, tell us about your beautiful dress. But Amelia can't tell the class about her fiesta dress with one, two, three fancy skirts. Why do you think she can't tell about it? It is really fancy. And if she twirls, it twirls with her. I wonder why. The teacher wants to hear about it. Do you think maybe the kids want to hear about it? Let's see. Amelia starts to move away. Then suddenly, whoosh, her skirts whisper and stir up her senses. Amelia remembers tropical breezes. Tropical breezes that made palm trees sway. Finding her voice, she has something to say. La, 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 bamba, Amelia sings. On my island home, we love fiestas. Do you guys know what a fiesta is? Yeah, it's a party. Looking up, she sees curious faces. We love fiestas with dancing in the streets. So once she starts to think about her home, she begins to twirl and then she dances and look at her friends do they look engaged yeah they look really interested in what she's doing and swoosh amelia shows her talking skirt swirling a samba twirling a tango whirling a rumba soon everyone hears amelia's talking skirt swaying they start hooraying, and Amelia feels at home right here in America. 
And so here, look, there they are all giving her a round of applause. The end. That was really a sweet story, right? And I really do love how, even though she didn't bring show and tell, her teacher still um, convinced her about standing up there and showing what she was wearing because that was also a show and tell that the boys and girls had never seen before. So yeah, that was a great story. Alrighty, friends, so I will see you right now in a little bit for our ELA session. Okay, finish your homework. Bye.